Hello, today we're talking about the chipset of Phone 2A, exciting stuff, but I'll be real with you. Anytime we're talking about clock speeds and nanometers and things like this, I'm a bit lost. So let's go draft in my boy Raymond and he'll give us a deep dive on Phone 2A. Let's go. I know you have a flight, so we have to keep yep. this tight. Yep, let's go. Together. You ready? Oh. Three, two. Three, two. So Raymond, you're completely fresh to the channel. I don't think we've done content before. Nope. For the people at home, who are you and what do you do? Um, I'm Raymond, I'm a product marketing manager for Aerodactyl Project, also known as Phone 2A. Product marketing manager, what does that mean? Like, what do you do on the day-to-day? -day? On the day-to-day, -day, I contact uh, with the product team and find out all the juicy details about our newest product, uh, finding a way to put that into our marketing content. I was a product manager for the Phone 2, uh, Phone 1 for the Glyph interface and we worked on features such as Essential Notification and the Glyph Composer together with the talented designers. Raymond is my uh, go-to guy um, anytime things are getting a bit too technical and he needs to kind of like explain to me like a five-year-old type language. So Raymond, in terms of what's in the Phone 2A, processor-wise, what are we going for? We're going for the MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro. Okay, so we're going for a MediaTek processor. Why are we going for this specific processor versus the, the Snapdragon counterpart? Well, the aim of the Nothing Phone 2A is to deliver our Nothing unique design identity, but also it's important that we get the best possible performance to our users. We knew that MediaTek will be a hard sell since Qualcomm is a lot better known here in the UK, but we couldn't justify going with a lower performing processor. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell you this, but we were in between two other Snapdragon processors. So it's the 7S Gen 2 and the 782G. I'm guessing those two Snapdragons that you mentioned performed lower than yeah. the MediaTek one currently. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so it makes sense you're going for it just because it's a more powerful processor. You're, you don't care about the names of uh, labels on certain yeah. things. How do you know that this definitely performs better? Well, you see the 7200 Pro was made with TSMC's second generation for nanometer process. It's one of the most advanced uh, manufacturing processes and is responsible for a lot of successful chips like the A plus Gen 1 that we use for Phone 2. Also, Apple used the same one, the A16 for the iPhone 15. Okay, that all sounds very good. What mm -hmm. does it all mean? Well, you see, the nanometer refers to the size of the transistors on the chip. So we have four nanometer. So then the Snapdragon 782G Plus uses six nanometer. So when the transistors are bigger, you see like less of them can fit in on the chipset, which means that you get lower computational power and also power efficiency. Although the 7S Gen 2 is also a four nanometer process, it's manufactured by Samsung. So, so the Samsung Foundry's four nanometer process is not as advanced as TSMC's. You know, so the A Gen 1, and A plus gem from Qualcomm. They're essentially the same design, but the plus variant was manufactured by TSMC and the non plus was by Samsung. And the non plus had a lot of heating issues and power draw issues, while the A plus gem one is one of the best performing chipsets out there. Sorry, Raymond. What is a TSMC? A uh, TSMC <laughs> is, uh, so TSMC is this company based in Taiwan. They specialize in manufacturing semiconductors. So companies like AMD, Nvidia, Qualcomm, right? Mm -hmm. They all design the chips and they send off the design to TSMC to manufacture. Mm -hmm. How is the design the same and yeah. they get manufactured and Be how are they different? I don't understand. Because you know, like the manufacturing is such an intricate process. You're manufacturing at the nanometer level. So a lot could go wrong. Yeah, if your process is not like perfect, mm. right? There's also like a yield rate. Let's say if you set your machine to manufacture 100 chipsets, how many actually work? Usually that range, before the technique is that refined, it could go as low as like 30%. Only 30% work? Yeah, it is all up to the manufacturing. That's insane. Super interesting though. Yeah, yeah. at a nanometer level, wow. Yeah. So just to recap, Raymond, we have a phone, we need to pick uh, components for it. We look what's on the landscape in yep. terms of what's already being produced. Yep. We like this MediaTek processor because it delivers great power, but it's also manufactured by people we trust. Yeah. So yeah, I can see the rationale as to why you guys pick these different mm. things to go into this phone. Now that you've been working on it for a few months, how does it feel in your hand? Is it is it working the way you want it to? Yeah, it's great. I've been using it for the past four months now. See. And it's great to see the software gradually improve. Mm. Uh, in terms of the raw performance, we can reach Antitude score as high as 140,000, which is roughly 10% higher than some of the competitors we're looking at. However, you know, you shouldn't trust these numbers always. Um, they don't reflect on a lot of things, like as in like the user experience, how it feels on your hand, how well optimized the OS is, yeah, because that's what counts. But in terms of the test that you guys have run, you know, it's it's outperforming, uh, was it Snapdragon counterparts? Yeah. Yeah, and it's feeling real good in your hand. It's snappy, it's yeah. as quick as you want it to be. Yeah. All right, amazing bro, congrats. Yeah. Four months you've been working on this. How has that been for you? Well, in the start it was rough. 
I've been exclusively using Phone 2 for one and a half year before this. But I think gradually as a software team is picking up on the optimizations, as well as we hired a lot of specialists that worked with MediaTek before because some of engineers never worked with MediaTek. The performance is really getting there. When you mentioned the name, you said 7200 Pro. Is Pro like any different to the original or? Yeah, so we've actually worked together with MediaTek to co-engineer this custom chipset just for the Phone 2A. It will feature better software hardware integration. So for example, we have tuned the power draw of certain components from the chipset, like the display I see and the, the modem to be more power efficient, roughly by 10%. And also we have our software team has developed features specifically for this chipset in order to run them at a deeper level. So there's this feature called Smart Clean. And what it does is at night when you're charging your phone, you know, like one or two days a week, uh, it would do like a deep clean. And it's not like any of your files will go missing. It kind of reshuffles the order mm. of the files. So it does like a, like a bi-weekly defrag of like your different files and stuff like that? It's a bit like that. But since it's a flash drive, it's not exactly called defragging, but the idea is that it makes sure that your UFS read and write speed is as fast as it was when it was brand new. Yeah, because a lot of people is talk it? about how like the phone will get slower over yeah. time and it's like yeah. you have the same phone, it should be just as fast, but for some reason two years down the line, yeah. it just feels slower. Is that something that's going to yeah, like exactly. help with that? Basically? So there's uh, two reasons for that, right? The first one is the software is getting too heavy for mm -hmm. the older processes to run. But with nothing OS, we keep a very light. So I don't think any of our phones should experience that issue. The second thing is the, actually the file system. So over prolonged use, files get written and deleted. Over time, um, files kind of get out of order. So the read speed for you to find something takes significantly longer. This is why when you're opening apps sometimes with the older phone, it just takes so long. It makes a lot of sense. So it's like when people are using their phones, it's kind of leaving little bits behind as you delete and rewrite and things yep. like that. And that just slows things down. And this thing here kind of goes through, cleans up those bits yep. and keeps it on track. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. That's cool, man. So from our research, we found out that a lot of our users actually use Windows computers. File transfer between FAT and NTFS is usually not the fastest as the files need to be converted in the application layer. But with this chipset, we've done optimization to run it directly at the kernel level. This means that we are getting twice the transfer speed when you're plugging your phone into a computer and transferring your files between them. Amazing. So this NF, NF, NFT, <laughs> NTFS, right? Yeah, yeah. NTFS writing and things like how, I know you explained it, but how does it make it quicker? So essentially what happens is when you connect your phone to the computer, mm. all the data that goes through, usually you will need an application layer. So like on the software level to process it before you can put it into like XFAT that's used for phones. Um, but with this optimization, the chips that can handle that conversion directly and write it straight into memory without ever having to touch the software. So I know it's a little bit difficult to compare to the phone two. How does it compare to phone one? It's a lot better than phone one because first of all, the process is newer. It's, uh, Two years, it's been two years since we released the phone one. So obviously we're going to see the performance gain as the industry moves together forward. And also for the power efficiency side, since again, four nanometer, phone one was six nanometer. So you're gonna see a lot longer battery life on the phone 2A compared to the phone one. Oh, that makes sense, man. Thanks for explaining that. I think like I uh, add some more questions around. So, sorry, uh, I have a flight to catch. Oh, like so, right now? Yeah, right now, I need to go. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Right. Thanks for explaining, right. man. Thank Appreciate you so much. it. Thanks, Thanks everyone again. to Raymond. Thanks for that, bro. Really interesting. You got to go, runner? Okay. Raymond, sorry about that. I hope you made your flight. Thank you so much. That was super interesting about the processor there. I hope you guys found it interesting at home. If you want to see more of Raymond on the channel, drop a comment below. And... No, you're good. <laughs> Amazing. All right, nice one, man. Safe flight. Thank you. Thanks, Raymond. Uh, what happens is on the front end, you have programs written in Java or Kotlin, uh, and they get compiled and converted into machine code uh, by the Android runtime. Right. So then the SOC is responsible for executing each line of code separately.